Welcome back everyone, Nathro's back with part 2 of Geography Now, Slovakia, we left off on demographics, so let's just jump right back in. Thank you Ivan. Peter, how would you describe what it means to be a Slovak? We are a very patriotic nation. It also means being kind of left out of everything and also being very passionate about everything you like but also about everything you hate that has to be said <laughs> lastly being religious for most of the time and loving strong alcohol i like that thanks peter oh by the way this is a slovak axe one of you guys sent it to me for fan friday forgot who it was but thank you in any case, here is cool. the demographics graph. First of all, Slovakia has a population of about 5.5 million people and has a near net zero migration rate. The country is, of course, primarily made up of ethnic Slovaks at somewhere around 82%. The second largest group 82. would be Hungarians living mostly along the southern part of the country at about 8.3%. I mean, at one point in history, much of Slovakia was actually called Upper Hungary. From there, you have the Romani or Roma, estimated at about 2%. And the rest are groups mostly Slavic in origin, like Czechs, Ukrainians, and Rusins, not Russians, Rusins, keep in mind, there is a difference. As well as a few non-European. Rusins. They use the euro as their currency. They use the type C and E plug outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. The official language is, of course, Slovak, which, by the way, has the longest alphabet in Europe with 46 letters. Long story oh, short, wow. it's basically the same language as Czech. There's like a few small minor differences. Ooh, 46 characters uh, in their alphabet. I noticed, though, that a lot of them uh, seemed like duplicates of one letter, but just with like a mark at the top. Um, I want to say one of you said in the comments that if you've got a mark um, uh, on top of the letter that you that you pronounce it in a different way. Does every letter in the Slovak alphabet um, have like a different version to it with that mark? Let me know. Peter, explain. Ah, oh, this is a tough one to explain. Czech is the only Slavic language Slovaks can perfectly understand. We're used to Czech language in media, mm. movies, etc. since birth, so we kind of learn it subconsciously. Czechs can understand Slovak perfectly too, but they are definitely worse at speaking Slovak, as they're not used to Slovak things as much as we're used to Czech uh, things. For okay, example, that makes sense. a blueberry is Chuchorietka in Slovak, but Borovka in Czech. Stork is Bocian in Slovak, but Chap in Czech, while Turtle is Koritnačka in Slovak, but Želva in Czech. Completely different mm. words. Thank you, Peter. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so faith-wise, unlike their Czech brothers, most Slovaks do, to whatever degree of devotion, at least nominally identify with being part of a religion or church. About two-thirds claim Catholicism, 4% Greek Byzantine Catholicism. Yeah, that's a thing. Protestants make up about 10%, mm. and the Rusin community is mostly Orthodox, which, going off of that, I think might be a good opportunity to briefly talk about the Rusin people, or sometimes called Ruthenian or Carpatho-Ruthenians. Even though they only make up about 1% of the population, Slovakia has the highest population population of Rusins out of any other country in Europe. They are a stateless people group spread mostly across Poland, Slovakia, and Ukraine. They have their own unique mm. language, architecture, traditions, and even flag. If you ever find yourself in Slovakia wow. and have time, check out a Rusin village. It's a refreshing experience, I guess. You'll be like so cultured and enlightened. <laughs> what is my life Stupid. becoming? Cool people in Slovakia. And one thing all the people love is sports. And with that, here's art with the sports part. Oh, nice to see you. It's <laughs> been a really long time since we've shot Geography Now. <laughs> Slovakia. Okay, so with this country, there's one sport they absolutely go crazy for, ice hockey. Every ah, Slovak I knew it. will I knew at it. some <laughs> point gloat about the 2002 World Championship that they won against Russia. It um, yeah, I believe them. I think even Peter mentioned it <laughs> in, in one of his videos. I think I also remember saying that Slovakia was a nation that was good at hockey, but then like some people uh, <laughs> repl replied to me in the video saying like, no, we uh, we used to be good, but we haven't been <laughs> good for a long time. And oh, I, that kind of got me sad, but hey, year by year, take it year by year. You never know. You can get better. It was a real huge deal for them. Of course, figure skating has always been a favorite pastime as well. These two guys won like a lot of awards and I can't pronounce their names at all. Try to pronounce them, Art. How would you pronounce that? Andrej Nepala. Andrej's nipples. Andrej's nipples. <laughs> what? Andrej's nipples. What? After that, like most countries, soccer or 
Football is the second favorite sport and every Slovak will tell you about the time that they beat Italy in 2010. Finally, they've received 36 <laughs> medals in the Olympics up to the last one in 2016, not including the times that they were competing under Czechoslovakia or the Austro... <laughs> <laughs> or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It sucks that the Olympics were canceled in 2020. Am I right? And for some reason, the only event that they mm. excel at the most is canoeing. Yeah, they have like eight gold medals in canoeing for some reason. Slovakia really rose my boat. No, wait. It floats my boat. Too much you cheese. Yes, yeah, Slovaks will surprise you just when you think you got them figured out. Easter comes around and they celebrate like this. Ah! Uh. <laughs> yeah, no joke. And with that, I guess it would probably be I remember when when I first uh, heard about that in one of Peter's videos, I just <laughs> Oh man, I couldn't believe it. Of course, a lot of it is exaggerated, but <laughs> it's it's awesome how like, I don't know. I, I, to me, it's it's that much more funny because I've already seen a lot of what they're talking about because of Peter's videos. <laughs> oh, I love it. Be appropriate to jump into the Random Hannah culture segment. Here's Random Hannah. Yeah, that tradition, it's supposed to symbolize a woman blossoming into beauty. Okay. Oh, and speaking of beauty, <laughs> very quickly, guess what? I'm wearing a shirt with my own face on it, which you can also purchase at geographynow.com. Now into the episode. Anyway, as an industry powerhouse, it's no surprise that Slovaks have quite a few inventions under their belt. This guy had about 20 patents, including one of the first wireless telegraph machines. And this guy supposedly was the real inventor of the modern helicopter. During Ooh. weddings and special events and festivals, you might spot the traditional folk costume for men and women, known as Croy. The styles vary by region, but usually include white shirts and blouses with patterned multicolored aprons, vests, and head coverings. Slovaks have a deep history of folklore and storytelling, one of the most famous legendary heroes being Juraš Janšík. Did I say it right? Good enough. Who is basically the Slovak <laughs> version of Robin Hood. Today, they have made one movie that received an Oscar in 1966 for the best foreign language film, The Shop on Main Street, depicted a story in World War II. Keep in mind, this was when they were under Czechoslovakia, but the movie was made with a complete Slovak cast and filmed in Slovakia. And finally, we cannot mm. forget the contributions to the visual arts. The most common pottery you will find is likely the Modra style of ceramic, usually white and blue with elaborate oh, floral patterns. That does look familiar. Otherwise, since independence in 93, Slovakia has dabbled more and more into the modern contemporary movement. It's not uncommon to find galleries with pieces depicting distorted scenes oh, and cool. still lifes done with aggressive brushstrokes and a hint of surrealism. And Ooh, wow. I've actually been playing Magic the Gathering ever since I was a kid. I mean, always super casually, but it's really cool how they uh how they actually put that into into some of the art in the cards. Also, those art designs on those dishes, I'm almost positive I've seen stuff like that at stores um, here where I live. So, good stuff. And speaking of surreal, here's Keith with his music segment, Buy My Shirt. <laughs> Whee! All right, so you all know the drill here. <laughs> Look at this, you can wear literally this face on your body. At geographynow.com. Make sure my hair looks good. So, Slovakia. First off, the old stuff. In Slovakia, bone pipes dating back to my phone going off. Oh, jeez. Wanna make a meaningful connection? <laughs> What? In Slovakia, <laughs> bone pipes dating back to the early Bronze Age were discovered near the Nitra region and Celts were ruling the area. Today during festivals, Slovakia mm. style bagpipes and jaw harps are commonly played. However, one instrument every Slovak will proudly boast about, the fujar. It's like a super tall wooden bassoon looking thing, very unique to the country and often considered a national symbol. Mm. From the 1800s, Slovak music came more Austro-Hungarian influence. Composers like this dude became a prominent figure <laughs> in the romantic it. genre during this time. Today, the music culture in Slovakia has evolved through many layers of influences from every <clears throat> period of their history and fuses them together. This lady, Marika Gambitova, has like more albums than any other Slovak artist. Today, they have some of the most renowned festivals in Europe, like Bratislava Music Festival uh, and... Pisky any uh, Pieskeni festivals. Okay, I will admit when I when I see the the Slovak language like you know written down or on screen, it does look very 
like very intimidating. Just like the way the lettering looks and then you see like the symbols on top of the letters and like the apostrophes and it's it's like you see that and it's like man there's no way I'm gonna be able to pronounce that like <laughs> I'll probably sound like a freaking idiot <laughs> but anyway. One of the most well-known in Poda festivals <laughs> dating back to the 50s. You're just gonna leave that. Finally gotta add some metal. Slovakia definitely holds their ground in the metal culture. Here are some really nice. great bands I have found through my findings. List right here uh also a big shout out to <laughs> our fellow geography peep andre from romania he sent me this shirt uh i think his band's called iena either way go check them out they're cool thank you keith all right and with that let's quickly mm. summarize the history of slovakia there's a lot of stuff it goes back to the early bronze and iron age lots of different peoples and tribes took over like the celts lots of invasions even the huns got in on it then the slavs came in and samo's empire great moravia in the ninth century the hungarian kingdom years czechoslovakia established in 1918 World War II, they were kind of a Nazi puppet state. They're not too proud of it. Slovak uprising. Communism years. Huh. Velvet Revolution. They peacefully Ooh. split off from Czechia and they joined the EU. That's basically it. And now here's the part of the episode That's where we basically the top it. notable people from <laughs> Slovakia. There's so many of them. I'm just going to kind of put on a photo montage so you can kind of just uh, maybe take a screenshot and hear some of them. And of course, you, PP Peter, deserve a spot on this section. Yes. Yes, you got that right. He most certainly has inspired me, and I've even thought, you know, once I get fully vaccinated, making a couple of videos about Texas. If you guys would be interested in that, let me know in the comments. Let's be real. And with that, let's move on to the final segment, the... All right, Slovakia and friends. Now, when you're a country that's kind of been subjugated by multiple empires and people groups and been exposed to many different ethnicities, you kind of, you know, build up your repertoire and entourage over the years, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how Slovakia is. <laughs> for one, Austria and Hungary are like the, hey, hey, oh, don't worry about those empire years you subjugated us under for centuries. We're cool. We're, I mean, we're still keeping our eyes on you, but uh, we're cool these days. <laughs> but not for real. Today, much of their business uh... goes through these two countries and they get along just fine. Now, for Albania and Romania, they were the only two war Warsaw Pact members that did not participate in the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia, which the incident even led Albania to withdrawing from the pact. So there's always that kind of a uh, mm. thank you for not being a douche towards us attitude when it comes to Albania and Romania. Interestingly enough, Little Liechtenstein had a long-standing dispute over some land that they claim belongs to them in Slovakia. Oh, wow. This dispute lasted until 2009 when they finally arranged diplomatic relations. However, some people might still bring up the dispute. Ukraine, Croatia, Serbia, and Poland are the Slav cousins they like to see from time to time and whoa hold on yeah I, wow there was i had never heard of such a thing when i was randomly looking up like some information about world war ii like sometimes i would go off on a tangent and just like get absorbed into like to some other like european conflicts um but that one i had never heard of hmm I may have to <laughs> research that or maybe find a video about that and react to it. But anyway, yeah, let's keep going. Share hearty conversations with. Many Slovaks like to visit Croatia for vacation. And likewise, many people from all of the other countries like to visit the Slovak mountains. For Ukraine, Slovakia is like their gateway to the EU. And many come over not just to visit, but study in their universities. Finland kind of sees Slovakia as a good luck charm as they won the ice hockey world championship twice when it was hosted in Slovakia in 2019 uh, and 2011. <laughs> India, nice. South Korea, Japan, Armenia. <laughs> Mexico and the USA are some of the countries outside of Europe that have all had high profile visits either by heads of state or foreign ministers and each country has expressed interest in expanding relationships. When it comes to their best friends however, nice. it's not even a best friend. It's almost a conjoined twin, Czechia or of the course. Czech Republic. Yeah. These two are as close as two countries can possibly be. They basically speak the same language, they have shared almost every moment of history together, and they just get each other the best. The only difference is that Czechia tends to be more liberal, Slovakia more conservative, Czechia less religious. Oh. Slovakia more religious, Czechia drinks more beer, Slovakia drinks more spirits, but otherwise, they are practically joined at the hip. Hmm. In conclusion, Peter, I think you should take this one. What would you say? Slovakia is like Czechia's little sibling everyone keeps forgetting about or mistaking it for its twin Slovenia. It may not be big <laughs> in size, but it's huge in natural wonders, quirky places slash traditions, and very passionate and generous people. Perhaps the most common connotation with Slovaks I've heard from foreigners is that we're crazy but in a good way so remember crazy but in a good way awesome peter love that you rock thank you for being in this episode check yes. his youtube channel out stay tuned slovenia the not slovakia country is coming up next oh, oh that was great I, oh, I loved it 
Well, that was Geography Now Slovakia. And oh man, the, the fact that Peter was a part of it just made it a hundred times better. Um, I love how he slipped in <laughs> some some of his own humor, like from his like from his Peter channel. Oh man, that that just made it so much better. Yeah, when when you see stuff like this, you it you know you can't help but uh, get inspired to want to visit that place. You know what I mean? And that being said, like I feel like since I watched the Slovakia episode, um, I kind of feel obligated to watch the uh, <laughs> the Czech Republic one too. So um, maybe that'll be the um, the next one that I react to for geography now. Well, that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, you know, do all that good stuff. You know what to do. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.